British Columbia, a land full of mysteries. From its mountain ranges to its temperate forests, this area is truly a wonder. With an absolute location of 53.7 degrees north and 127.6 degrees west, it is the westernmost province in Canada, occupying 944,737 kilometers squared. This region has a lot to offer. When and how was British Columbia formed? British Columbia has been forming for a long time. Starting at the Mesozoic era, it began with the collision of the North American plate and the Pacific plate, allowing subduction to occur. This movement caused folding, faulting, and volcanic activity. The melting crust created a volcanic arc called the Coast Mountains, one of the largest granite forms stretching all across from North Vancouver to Yukon. With the la last ice age ending about 12,000 years ago in the Cenozoic era, glaciers melted and eroded river valleys became bodies of water. What types of rocks are found in BC? In British Columbia, there are three main types of rocks, metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous. Since mountains cover 75% of BC, we can find all three rock types here. Sedimentary rocks are found in the Rocky Mountains, metamorphic rocks are found in Coast Mountains, and igneous rocks are found in the Cascade Range. Landforms in BC. In British Columbia, there are two landform regions, the Western Cordillera and Interior Plains. The Western Cordillera is made up of tall, rugged mountains, and the Interior Plains are made up of valleys and plateaus. The entire provincial landscape is shaped by glaciers, which are rounding off mountain peaks and shaping valleys. The lower sea levels cause the carving of long fjords along the coast. Climate in BC BC has both continental and maritime climates. The interior and central region of the province have hotter summers and winters are colder and snowier. On the contrary, in the north, winters are long and cold with lots of snow and summers are short. British Columbia is part of the Cordilleran, Taiga, Boreal, and Pacific Maritime Climate Regions. Using the lowering factors, I will now see if they affect the climate of BC. Latitude. Since BC is located north of the equator, it has colder climates. Oceanic Currents. The North Pacific Ocean Current provides a vast reservoir of heat and water that is partially transferred to coastal BC to produce a mild climate, moderated climate and temperatures. Winds and Air Masses. The maritime polar wind air mass causes a cool and moist climate. Elevation. BC, in comparison to the rest of Canada, has a lot of mountains, therefore with more elevation. This results in colder temperatures in places of higher elevation. Relief. Since BC is located on the windward side of the Rockies, there is more precipitation and heavier snowfalls. Near water. Near water affects the climate because of how the water cools and heats. Beside the Pacific Ocean, you will have a maritime climate. Soil and Vegetation in BC British Columbia is part of the complex soil region, as well as the wet climate soils. British Columbia's area is quite large and has different latitudes throughout, therefore allowing the soil and vegetation to change. Wet climate soil is not good for agriculture because of leaching. Because it is so wet, the minerals are being washed away. On the contrary, complex soil regions vary depending on factors such as relief, elevation, and climate patterns. The vegetation region of BC is part of the West Coast Forest, Western Cordillera, and the Boreal and Taiga Forest. Did you know that the West Coast Forest is known as a temperate rainforest, holding 25% of the world's temperate rainforests? On the West Coast, the trees are lush and thick. They include Douglas fir, Sitka spruce, red cedar, and western hemlock. The trees here are deciduous. The Western Cordillera is a mixed forest of deciduous and coniferous trees such as maple, beech, ash, oak, and birch trees are found in the same forest as spruce, fir, pine, cedar, and hemlock. In the boreal and taiga forest, there is a noticeable domination of coniferous trees, specifically white and black spruce, pine, and balsam fir. British Columbia is one complex province, but that is definitely what makes it such a beautiful and interesting one. Natural resources in BC. When it comes to natural resources here in BC, it is very diverse. In British Columbia, there is a large lumbering industry, in addition to the mining industry. 
Because of its mountainous areas, there is a large supply of minerals. In addition to the large mineral supply, the Peace River Logan has many valuable natural resources, including petroleum, natural gas, and coal. Lastly, water and renewable sources found throughout BC allow hydroelectricity to occur and avoid destruction of habitats of aquatic life. Tourist Attractions British Columbia, a province with sites aplenty, both natural and human. Two-thirds of its natural wonders have been kept in untouched and undiscovered. From its amazing bodies of water to national parks, this place is stunning. Significant bodies of water. Since British Columbia is a coastal province, it is plentiful of water, the largest body of water being the North Pacific Ocean. In addition, major lakes include the Kootenay Lake, Alton Lake, and the Kensal Lake, the deepest fjord lake in the world. Major rivers here include the Fraser River and the Columbia River. Significant Parks British Columbia's parks are another important element. Some include the Pacific Rim National Park Reserve. Here you can find long sandy beaches as well as old growth coastal temperate forests. Another example is the Yoho National Park. Here you can find various trails, waterfalls, and beautiful lakes such as the Emerald Lake. Natural Tourist Attractions Lastly, I would like to speak about the Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. It represents an amazing landscape. Located on the West Coast Forest, you get an amazing view from the treetops. It is truly an experience of a lifetime. You embark on an amazing treetop adventure and reach the top of the trees. The Douglas fir and western hemlocks are the dominance of this experience, living for over 400 years old. In addition, you also go and walk by the amazing Capilano River. News article in BC. In this article it explains how this year's wildfires are fairly quiet. In fact, it has been one of the quietest wildfire seasons in the past 10 years. The sustained hot, dry weather of August 2020 has resulted in potential wildfires in the southern half of BC. Moreover, Sarah Hall, a fire information officer in Kamloops, has let us know that this time of year there were more than 21,000 hectares of land burning from 664 fires. On the contrary, this year has only 917 hectares burned due to 23 fires. Hall suggests that this is a quieter season due to the fuels being wet earlier this season. Thus, it is not likely for them to set on fire. However, the hot, dry air now will make it more common for grass fires to spark up for a campfire and get out of hand, she said. To tie this in with geography, this article relates to our unit because of climate change. Research shows that changes in climate create warmer and drier conditions that are boosting increases in wildfire risks. Climate change has also caused uncertainty to seasonal changes of the wildfire patterns, thus creating some summers to be quieter than others. In addition, we can relate this to natural disasters, another topic discussed in our class. The aftermath of a wildfire can be disastrous, if not more than the fire. A particularly destructive fire burns away plants and trees that prevent erosion. If heavy rains occur after a fire, landslides, ash flows, and flash floods can occur. So that finishes off our video on BC. We studied all of British Columbia's physical characteristics and what makes the land unique. As well, we have analyzed the current news here. I hope that I have convinced you that British Columbia has plenty to offer.